All right, so hi everyone. Thank you for coming back to my channel. I'm Stephanie, if you're new here. So I'm just getting my boys back from about a week or so of not having one. Um, we've had a lot going on in the last couple of weeks and I wanna share all that with you guys. I am going to do a life update video. I keep telling you guys that I'm gonna do it. It's recorded, but I need to edit it and I need to do a voiceover. And I'm kind of going through some stuff in my head of what I all wanna share with you guys. I know I don't need to, um, but I think it, with doing some of these videos, it's gonna help with some of the stuff that our family has gone through and then some of like just memories and the mourning process of losing my mom so let me just give you guys a little update on some of the stuff that i've went through in my life growing up with my mom so and our family so there's seven of us i'm the youngest out of seven and my mom had um, a history of mental health stuff. Pretty much our whole life, we've had to deal with a lot of the stuff that my mom was struggling with. And when it came down to the younger kids, so me and my brother, my mom worked full time. She went to college, she did all this stuff. So we didn't have a lot of the stuff like that my older sisters went through and stuff like that. So in the beginning of my experience with my mom was around eighth grade when I knew that there was some stuff going on, like mental health stuff with my mom. I'm not going to get into what the mental health part of it was and what caused it. I'm not going to go through that today. That's not what today's video is about. I pretty much had my mom's support through my whole life, especially with having my daughter at 16. I always had my mom's support and she was always there for me. It wasn't the case when my older sisters were younger. A lot of responsibilities were put on my sisters. Uh, so that's just a little back background of some of the stuff that they went through and then uh, with caring for my mom later I am the one that is the closest to my mom in the area a lot of us did as much as we could for my mom my mom was married my mom and dad got a divorce later in life and then um my mom pretty much lived by herself in an apartment and towards it was kind of after COVID is when uh, we saw more of a decline with my mom's health. A lot of, our family has a lot of heart issues. So a lot of um, breathing issues, a lot of health issues. So a lot of times we would just, I would just pick up my mom and she would come over here and spend time with the kids. My mom was always connected with my kids. So a lot of times I would just pick, pick up my mom and I would bring her here and we would hang out for the day. We would get McDonald's and she would always treat my kids to stuff like that. And then I would bring her home and a lot of times she would walk herself into her apartment building. But the problem with that, there was a long hallway and she would have to sit a lot because she couldn't breathe by the time she got to her apartment. And after a while, things just started declining. She was um, calling life alert a lot and um it just got to the point where if she wasn't able to take care of herself anymore then we needed to get some extra care for her so that was about maybe like two years ago we put her in assisted living in hopes that that would take care of some of the uh, issues as in somebody else taking care of her. I, I wasn't able to take care of her. I live out of town from maybe where her doctors were. I have a big van. We don't have a van um, able to get my mom in and out. And that made things a little harder for us to care for her. So a lot of times I would just go there and visit. Um, me and my sister helped move her in there we got her all set in and then we brought her there it kind of got to the point with her mental health there that she relied on the staff a lot and they were short staffed and things just got a little complicated and my mom just didn't um and there wasn't enough care there for my mom as in mental health stuff so she had a good support team it just my mom needed a lot of people to keep her going in some ways. 
So um, after the time where my mom's health just kept declining, as in not walking very well, um, starting to need a wheelchair, um, not really trying to walk anymore, not really wanting to use her arms anymore. And then it just got to the point where we almost needed her in a nursing home so that if it got to the point where she couldn't feed herself anymore, that there was people there that would be able to do a lot of that for her. Uh, so we got her transferred into an area closer to my home so that every time that I would go to town, it would be in that area of me being able to go there. Um, so I, I would go there as much as I can. A lot of people that know the things that I do, as in I still work part-time, I do YouTube a lot, and I still have kids and a hobby farm. So the reality of really hanging out with my mom a lot was kind of hard unless I stopped homeschooling and it just made things complicated, but we did as much as we could to make sure that my mom was taken care of. The place was amazing where she was at. So we really didn't have to worry about her care or anything with her being at the nursing home. Um, she still was very independent as in making her doctor's appointments. She made it very clear that she still uh, wanted to be independent in that way. Uh, a lot of times um, we would have or she had someone still bringing her to church and that was up to about a week or two before her passing is when um, she had a friend that would pick her up every Sunday and he would bring her to church and which was amazing. She was able to hang out with her friends at the table in our sanctuary or our uh, fellowship hall and she was able to hang out with her friends. And I do have people that are friends with her that watch my channel. So um, a lot of this is going to make sense to them. And uh, so she had a good, you know, friend support system. And so that was great that she was still able to get out. Not a lot with us, but we were able to like bring her snacks and she requested soup. So every time that I would do a grocery haul or whatever, she would always like, hey, can you bring, bring me a soup? So if you guys saw some of my grocery hauls, I mentioned that some of the cans of soup were for my mom. Or if we made homemade meals or whatever, we would bring our mom some food. Uh, so that's kind of what we were doing at the end. And then it, I had, if you guys remember, I had my uh, knee surgery done. I do have a video on that. Um, so you can go back. So during that time when I had my knee surgery done, there was two days where I couldn't go anywhere. So I couldn't go visit her. I couldn't do anything. And I just communicated with her on the phone. She was still able to kind of text at that time. Um, she didn't have a lot of movement in her arms anymore. We saw the decline go pretty quick at the end. Um, so I'm trying to think. There's a lot. Um, so at the end of the week from me getting my surgery done, I had it done on a Monday. I think it was a Friday or Saturday. My sister from Connecticut called me and my mom didn't call me for two days. And, you know, that in some ways was normal but I did feel a little off but I was still trying to recover and I didn't want to do a lot either because I needed to rest also and um, my sister called me which we talk a lot but we don't talk often enough and for her to call me I knew possibly that there might be something wrong. I answered the phone and she stated that mom hasn't called her in two days that I need to get there and check on her. My other sister lives about an hour and some away, so I'm the closest to get to her. And then my brothers all work and, you know, don't really have the time and they weren't the ones that were uh, in charge of taking care of her anyways. So I went there and normally my mom would get up in the morning with their help and sit in her wheelchair for the most of the day. She did get put on oxygen after she got put on hospice. She was on hospice for maybe, I want to say a couple weeks to maybe a month. And then um, uh, that's when 
right before that, we noticed her choking a lot on her food. Uh, they wanted to do different things with that. And then when she got put on hospice, she was able to just eat normally. We didn't have to uh, substitute anything for her feeding. It was more on based on what my mom wanted. Uh, and my mom was very direct with a lot of things that she wanted. She still was at the time on all her medications. She was on a lot of medications. And um, the Friday, the Friday before this, so when I went there, so the Friday, how did that go? I don't remember. There's so much going on. So Friday, I remember going there. We were talking and she was struggling with her swallowing. She had to swallow a couple times before she could even talk. And so that was slowly starting to happen before that day. And I just didn't think anything of it, I guess. It was just, we, we've dealt with my mom's health for so long that it was just kind of another thing. And uh, when I... When my sister called and I went there, she was laying in bed and I said, mom, you know, like, why are you still in bed? How come you're not up yet? And she's like, I'm not doing good today. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go talk to the nurses and find out what's going on. So usually my sister was the one that called, did all her medical stuff. I was the one that just cared for her as in like, what do you need? What do you want me to get? You want me to talk today? That kind of thing. Um, so then the, the another thing too, it, it was funny because a lot of times that I would go to there, she would always have my videos on. That was one of her requests at the end was to always have my videos on. So she, um, so she was laying in bed and I went to the nurses and I said, you know, like, hey, can you give me an update? Like what's going on? And she, they told me that uh, my mom was no longer going to have her medication, her food, or any more liquids. And uh, I kind of freaked out a little bit and was like, okay, well, I need to talk to somebody. I need to know what's going on. Um, and I was able to wait around and get that information. My sister came from Milwaukee because we knew that things were changing. We had a meeting um, and it was more or less like, you know, hey, you, we have 72 hours and At that time, it was a lot to take in, and um, my sister and I were like, okay, it's, you know, kind of like it's go time, and uh, she came down, my sister came, and they allowed us to stay, well, allowed her to stay in another room and do a lot of her work from the uh, place, from the, uh, I can't even think of what it's called right now, the nursing home. So she was there for two days and then uh, they said, you know, like, hey, if you want to stay, you can stay overnight. Um, and I was like, OK, great. So I stayed five days. Uh, we knew what was happening. We knew that things were going to happen, but we wanted to change some of it. And uh, there was a lot of anger a lot of fighting between our family a lot of decision making and at the end of the day my mom still had a choice on what she wanted and a lot of it wasn't said to us a lot of things were held back from my mom so that things could be done the way that she wanted and a lot of it didn't make sense to us um so we just made sure that you know, everybody was taking care of her. We take, took care of her. Um, she requested that she wanted her medicine and her food back. And that was kind of a tricky thing because she wasn't able to swallow anymore. Um, she did aspirate the day before, and this was the reason why things were progressing. Um, we had a lot of family and friends come and visit her. In a short amount of time of being there and um there was a lot of decision making between my brothers and uh and me and my sister uh before this my mom was helping me get 
uh, stuff situated in her bank account, um, life insurance, make sure all of that's taken care of getting our funeral set up. We ended up changing some of that at the end just because of cost. And, uh, with my sister, we were able to get that going. Um, we had a lot of support with our other brothers and sisters and, um, just a lot of the decisions that needed to be made. We didn't want to be the only ones making them decisions. Uh, we had the funeral stuff going or the celebrate, celebration of life. I had a couple uh, meetings with my church to make sure all of that was going to take place and how it was going to happen. And uh, so we had a lot of stuff going. So that was before the fact that this happened. So my mom was already working with me and making sure that everything was going to be taken care of. I was able to get there uh, when she needed me for us to do all that. So we got all of that done. And then uh, things changed with the funeral. So we had to update some of that. So that was kind of tricky. And then getting the uh, stuff going that needed to be done. Like the day after she passed. Um, oh, okay. So let me back up. I don't want to go too far. Um, so... We sat there with her for, so I think that was Friday. So from Saturday, Monday, Monday, she passed in the afternoon. I ended up taking off of work luckily because she passed at like 421 that night. Um, I still had therapy that day and I ran quick. Like it's only like two, two minutes away. And I ran quick because, you know, I wasn't exercising my leg and then this isn't about me, but I'm just saying like our life at that time was crazy. My friend was taking my kids almost every single day and she has uh, seven kids of her own, you know, and it's just like, oh no, she has nine kids of her own and it just was a blur at that time because we were just living life. Lauren was trying to take care of the kids. Um, he had to stop working and I don't know, it, it was this was our first experience with um, death in our family and someone someone really close to us. So, um, so it was a lot at that time. And, um, but more or less me and my sister or my sister and I, we really had to kind of just get things done. And the next day, uh, we, even that night, you know, like people came to say goodbye to her and uh, they came to take her and we were able to um, do still be part of it. Um, before she passed, though, my niece came up just as it was happening and we did a prayer over her and she took her last breath and we had to call everyone and uh i messaged my kids that were coming up and i let my daughter know in a text message that she passed in hopes that she would see it before she got there and my daughter got to the door and I had to tell her husband to not let the kids in because she didn't know yet what happened. And she lost it. And um, my daughter was really close to her, my oldest one. And uh, so we got to be there, you know, with my mom together. And then my son came and my brother's brother came my, and we all got to say goodbye and then right after that it was you know me and my sister just sat that night and my daughter and you know you're just going over everything that kind of just happened and uh the next day we it's like you can't even mourn you know and because we had so much to do we had you know we had to call people we had to get uh paperwork stuff done the place let us stay another that night well the night that my mom passed we got to stay there which was good for me in, in a way because i couldn't go home and
be a mom at that time. I just needed, there was so much for us to do and I was on the phone so much. And um, a lot of stuff happened between our family in that time, which I think a lot of people experience. And uh, some of the things that me and my brother experienced uh, was amazing. And uh, so we went through a lot and uh, we, um, so we had everything arranged. We had everything done. And, you know, I still had to go home and get pictures done, I thought. And uh, we got a lot done. And uh, sorry, I'm just kind of like all over the place because there's so much. So that week, um, I went home. We got mom. We had to go through mom. So we had to. My sister went back home, came back, and they gave us a couple more days to be able to clean up our room. So we did that. Went through a lot of our stuff. And then um, we ended up getting the staff there some coffee, some cookies, and some flowers. Uh, they ha We had a great team, like seriously. And I think I want to laugh a little bit. We've caused a lot of a lot of situations in that couple days that I, I'm so sorry for. But... That was my mom and um, I might even have people on here that's gonna watch this that's from there and they're gonna know all the stuff that we went through and the people that cared for her and the people that she made laugh. Um, everybody says their mom is amazing. My mom was amazing. Um, so we took everything out of our room and we said goodbye and, uh, we waited until March 4th she passed and then we waited till March 22nd when we had her celebration at our church. That was on a Friday and on March 19th is when I did my Sam's grocery video and um, I didn't have a voice that whole week. My kids were sick. So the next day my mom passed, I picked up my kids from my son's house cause he took them overnight. One of my kids were throwing up at his house and, uh, every day my kids were sick. And, uh, so every, so then that week Lauren had to take care of them while I'm trying to do this stuff for mom's funeral. The following week. Well, the 19th, um, my brother called me and, uh, he was already struggling with some stuff and, uh, there was just a lot that happened and a lot of, I think a lot of people go through a lot of regret and the things that they wish they would have did or did different. And, uh, if, if one thing comes out of this, the closeness my mom brought together at that between everybody um happened and uh so I went to Sam's that day and I w went to go get my mom's ashes and I came home did the video and that video should be all right out and that actually today is the day that I just did the introduction for that video and uh so that I get home to the video my cousin was with and I said, you know, we we didn't even get to talk, you know, I messaged her and I I wanted to be able to sit with her and just like let it all out. And uh, we were gonna go out to eat after I went shopping and I get down the road and I got a message stating like, Hey, are you at the hospital? And I was like, What is going on? you know, and I I'm like, I messaged the person back, um, and I was like, what's going on? And they're like, well, it's your brother, Todd. And I was like, like, my brother is my best friend. He's everybody's friend. And I was like, what is going, like, what is going on? Like, just tell me. And they're like, you need to get up there right now. So my cousin had to take my daughter home 
and uh, I went up there and my brother was in critical condition. Um, I did not get to see him. Uh, we were questioned with um, from an uh, officer to know what was going on, what was uh, what I thought maybe would be going on. And uh, I knew a little bit at the time of what happened to him. And I'm not even going to get into that in any of my videos. Nobody will ever know what happened. Um, but my brother wasn't that my brother that night. And uh, I sat there until he was. So I got there at like 5.45 that night or something like that. In the nearby hospital, not even where he is now. And I got there. So my other brother came and we talked a lot. And we, my brother got a CAT scan done just to see if he was able to be strong enough to get it transported. So it was only maybe like half an hour, 40 minutes away. But because my brother has a heart condition and a pacemaker, it makes things a little tricky. And they didn't know yet if he was having seizures or what was going on so uh they transport him at like 11 i think that night i finally was able to talk to my sister-in-law to know what you know what her opinion was on a lot of it and uh i honestly i don't even remember days at that after that happened i don't remember if i went up the next day or if it was the following day uh family was able to go up which I was surprised. It was like two people at a time, but I was really surprised with his condition and him being in ICU and that we could go up. So um, no one under 12 could go up, but um, my sister and I, we went up, hung out for the day. We went up pretty much almost every single day and the outcome of his condition was not good in any way. Uh, we didn't feel that, I mean, we had every answer, like they shared everything with us, uh, but, and the care there was amazing, but his condition, a lot of the, uh, some of the testing weren't positive. And it was confusing and a lot of things that ran through our minds of what could have happened or what was going to happen. Um, and if you made it out of it, what was our, or what was his uh, life expectancy? What would he have needed? What care would he have needed? Uh, because of his condition, there really wasn't any signs that uh, in the beginning that there was anything and if you guys are following along on my community tab you guys are kind of in on what's been going on so you guys know already uh the outcome of that when okay so I'm trying to think of there was there was some stuff in the middle that I, I can't remember but one of the situations was I was at home and my sister was here and we got a call stating that he didn't have any brain activity and we rushed up right away. We got up there and I can't remember if it was then, but we get there and his son is like, he opened his eyes and he moved his hands. And I, surprised I didn't like drop to the ground because that was like the best news that we didn't even expect that was even going to be said. And, you know, we still knew that that didn't mean a lot, but it was enough for us to have hope for him. Um, so we spent the rest of the day there. They have a lounge right down the hall that we were able to like hang out in and spend time there and be close with uh, my sister-in-law and, and stuff. So that was nice. And then, uh, you know, I would go back home and then we would go back and there was a day. Oh, so Thursday, I, so that was, I think, goodness I don't know it was so many days and then 
so like I think that was like the next week and then Thursday so that was like the week before I think and then the next week Thursday we had to decorate the church for my mom's celebration and uh we get done and the next day was supposed to be snow on the day of her celebration and so a lot of people you know couldn't make it or whatever because for some reason we had snow in March but uh that day we get done at our church and we get all the decorations done and I get a call from his son and he's like you need to get up here right now his breathing is terrible things don't look good so uh, I brought my kids to my daughter's house quick uh, me and my sister went up there and we get in we get up there and he's like uh I see this is the part where I'm like is that when he opened his eyes and stuff? But it wasn't. Um, so he was responding. And it was almost like every time that we went in the room and we talked to him, he couldn't communicate in any way because he was on a ventilator. Uh, but he was showing signs of like he would breathe different when we were in the room. His ventilator machine would go off because we felt like he was still inside and that he was trying to communicate with us. You know, we were so lost with not knowing the reality of what we were, you know, doing or going dealing with at the time. So every little movement my brother did was like another little step that we uh, rejoiced in and it was just amazing. But um, so the news that we got actually was good news not bad news and it was just my son or my brother's son came from uh pennsylvania to check on him and when he went in that room to talk to him i'm guessing that his breathing changed because like i said every time that we would go in there and communicate his body would try to respond to us and that's why he started coughing, I'm guessing, and he was trying, he can't talk, you know, because he's on a ventilator, and so, like, we feel like he was inside, but he couldn't, like, say anything, couldn't move his arms very well. Uh, that night, uh, my sister-in-law's sister was in there, and uh, we were trying to get some commands from him, and, like, Hey, Todd, you know, like, hey, can you move your eyes? You know, whatever. And he, he couldn't move his eyes from side to side, but he could open his lids. And then he, he, she's like, okay, great. You know, but we need you to do something bigger than that because then they were like, you know, this is just reflexes. This isn't him responding. And uh, she's like, okay, Todd, I need you to do this, like, with all your strength, um, can you give us a thumbs up? And he did. And um, the nurse that was optimistic because she sees this all the time. When we went in there, her smile was so big. And she says, and I've told this to everybody. She goes, in 20 years, this is the second time that I've ever seen anybody come out of this the way your brother is in and uh, it was a miracle in that moment. And, uh, and then the next day we went back up and there was nothing again. Uh, he just got tired. Like that was a big day for him. He was able to open his eyes and, you know, do that. Like that was hard. Uh, and you got to remember, he has a heart condition too. So uh, just recently, last year, he had his wires changed on his pacemaker. And, you know, his health in general was good. But, you know, still, he still had issues. Uh, and everything was just, like, that day was kind of like, you know, a setback. And we knew that. We knew we were going to have ups and downs. And... Uh, the next couple of days, they were like, okay, you know, we, if he wouldn't have moved, we only have like a couple of days to decide on what, you know, my sister-in-law was going to decide. And he moved and uh, that kind of threw all of that out the window, which is amazing. And then the discussion was to feed him through tubing. And we were able to do that. And, or they were able to do that and he threw it up. And, uh, 
and that was okay because we needed to get him stronger again by just you know doing what they could do and then they would give him medicine for throwing up and then we would, they would try it again uh nothing in that i'm aware of in his stats and everything showed why he even still was on a ventilator uh in the beginning of what happened my brother uh was pronounced well i don't want to say pronounced was dead and it took him 20 minutes to bring him back and knowing that information from the nurses and stuff that he shouldn't even be alive today and for him to be where he's at today is a crazy miracle and only God can do that and if you're not a believer this isn't the place for anybody to discuss anybody's beliefs right now but we are and we believe that God showed everybody a miracle in the last week for my brother and uh as of yesterday they took the ventilator out and he's breathing on his own and he's able to communicate and he can talk and that was not ever a sign of what we thought was going to come and there's a lot more stuff that i'm not going to share that's been going on behind the scenes that we're trying to get done with some family members and trying to arrange some stuff and making sure everybody's like included and taken care of and income money um you know we're driving back and forth my husband had to stop work a little bit so i stopped videos luckily uh with youtube you still make money even if you're not doing videos so that's gonna help a little bit i am back to work so i am being able to make money a little bit i only work part-time um my sister-in-law was not the person that made the income my brother did and things are getting put in place for her to have some income right now uh so we're trying to figure all that out there's other people involved that we're trying to connect with my brother so we're getting all that done. My sister and I and my sister-in-law and her sister are the people that are trying to make sure a lot of this gets done. So from mourning my mom on March 4th to March 19th with my brother being in critical condition, a lot has been going on. My kids were all sick. Me and Lauren got sick at the end. Luckily, it wasn't as bad as what my kids went through. And I just had a cough and lost my voice. Um, but I still wasn't able to rest. You know, I was going to therapy, still trying to take care of the kids. My husband to take care of the kids. We have animals, life, you know. Um, and I finally have a voice <laughs> over a week. And, well, that was the 17th, I think it was, when I lost my voice. And you can tell already, like, I'm still, this is like the last two days are when I actually had a voice. Otherwise, at the end of the night, it was like completely gone. Today, I don't have any updates. Um, I did update yesterday. So the 25th, I did update in my community tab. And that's where I'm going to update everyone on what's going on. All the prayers extra that we need right now for him, his, uh, his recovery. Also, what we're hoping for is we can get, or I, should, I keep saying we, because I just like, no, we're going to do it. And uh, that he can get out of ICU and he can be in a separate, another room that is less um, scary, I should say. So going up tonight, um, I'm going to be doing a Zoom call, hopefully with a family member. And then uh, doing that tomorrow is Wednesday. I have uh, one of my kids' birthdays on Saturday the 30th, Easter's 31st, Evelyn's birthday is April 3rd. So we're going to do both our birthdays on Easter. I have to have two cakes made by tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. Um, you guys saw my Easter video, what the kids got. I will link that down below if you missed it. Uh, that's done. Thank God that I have that done because my kids and none of that's even important. And if you guys are a believer, we all know that, uh, 
Easter isn't about the gifts and all of that. And uh, I don't want to put it out there that way. And if you're not a believer or whatever, that's just our life. And um, I still celebrate the tradition and I love to do that with my kids. So I have all that done. I just have to do a couple more things with wrap, how I want to wrap it and stuff. So that's good. Um, I still need to do some thank you cards and stuff for my mom's celebration. Uh, so I have to take care of some stuff to finish up her funeral stuff. And then uh, Saturday, I work before Easter. And then we're going to go back down. So Thursday, I'm going to go back by my brother. I shouldn't say down, but back by my brother. My brother is coming from Tennessee. We're going to go Saturday, hopefully, if he's still in town, to go to that. Easter is going to be uh, church Friday. This Friday is church service. Good Friday. And then Sat Friday night, I have my grandkids. I'm possibly going to go hang out with my cousin for a little bit. And she's coming from out of town. We're going to hang out and talk. Uh, Saturday, I got to work till one and then we're going to go by my brother Easter. I'm all over the place right now, but, uh, Easter and then well, what else was there? Oh, Easter is my brother Todd's birthday, which is crazy. So, um, I was, I don't want to say teasing, but I was teasing with my other sister-in-law not not my brother's wife but my other one and she messaged me the other day she's like hey do you remember that todd's birthday is on sunday on easter i was like yeah you know like god rose from the dead that day like i feel like that's my brother's birthday and we can celebrate his life that day. and that's just how i feel right now that i can celebrate that he's alive and that's just how I want to celebrate it. And um, I did tease with the kids. So I said, well, since it's Todd's birthday, I think we're just going to celebrate Todd's birthday. And that is Jesus's day. And it's uh, it's my brother's birthday. And we're going to celebrate him instead. And they all are like, mom, you know, like, hey, it's our birthday too. You know, and I was like, I'm just kidding. So I'm making light out of all the stress. My kids are just like, you know, that's their favorite uncle and the one that greets us every Sunday. And like every Sunday he would text me, he's like, how come you're not here yet? And we're just running like, you know, we got a lot of kids. And um, he would come down by us in the kids section and he would give my kids all a fist pump. And like, he would pay, purposely make it on Sunday, like uh, that every kid that he knows would always get a fist pump. And I was just that, that person and he was amazing um so Sunday we are going to celebrate and that he's still here with us and every day that he improves we're going to celebrate um but yes we've been through so much in the last couple weeks uh and I I you know whether or not something comes out of this video and something that I can have later my family can have later to remember what happened um and will my brother be mad I don't know he's a very private person and uh and that's why I'm not sharing everything but uh I just you know I feel that praying for someone I'm gonna if I can put it out to the world I'm going to and everybody's been praying and every day we see a miracle so I needed, I feel like my life update video that I was going to share was going to be so uh, different and it was going to be based on my mom and it wasn't going to be so in depth, but I needed, I kind of felt like I needed to do this video and I needed to do it while it's fresh versus waiting and then I wouldn't have uh, all the thoughts and stuff that I'm feeling now. So that is kind of like what I want to share with you guys. Um, so there's so much more that I could share that's just family related that I'm not going to obviously for privacy. Uh, but my brother was struggling at the end with my mom's passing. And it wasn't, I just want to clear it up. Like it wasn't suicidal. It wasn't in any way like that. That's not. Not, that's not at all what happened. Um, 
And some of the people that do follow me on here that know me privately or people that know me from YouTube that know me privately uh, know the information on what happened. And um, a lot of people would know if they knew my brother that, you know, that's not uh, a lot of it's just going to be kept privately. Uh, just there was so much going on and that that we've never experienced before in our life. And if you've ever experienced that before and you experienced it multiple times, you know what it feels like. And we've never dealt with that before. And we almost lost two family members, you know, like lost my mom and I almost lost my brother. So in a short amount of time, and that's pretty crazy to think about. And the emotional, the emotions in the last couple of weeks have been so intense. And my, I have friends and family that have been so supportive with all of what we've been going through and with my mom's celebration being done we can now uh mourn that and celebrate that and know that she's in a better place in here and i'm happy with that and sad i will be always sad but i was there for her until the end and i'm grateful for that and uh so that is good um my, I mentioned in my Sam's Club video at the end that moving forward, um, I'm still going to do grocery videos. I love doing videos. This is part of my life and who I am now. Um, I always felt like being a hairstylist was, since I was little, was always going to be my thing. And uh, after my mom's passing and things with my brother, I've really had to think of a lot of like what's important, what's not important anymore. And I love doing videos and I love being able to stay home with my kids. And I didn't work a lot, um, but it still was a lot. And I haven't made any decisions yet. Um, right now it's just getting through the things with my brother right now and all the things that I still need to take care of after my mom's passing. So that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, if videos get done, they get done. I don't have a requirement to get them done. I do have another commitment that needs to be done, another uh, video review. Actually, in my update video, there's going to be another uh, Timo review, very small, very light. Uh, but I have another c commitment that I agreed to, uh, and I, you know, before all this happened. So I got to do that. Otherwise, a lot of my videos, it's going to be probably just vlogs, uh, things with, you know, everyday life and updates and animal stuff. It's, we've been having to take care of animals and all that too, you know, so there's so much right now, but we're going to do one day at a time and just uh, do that. So I'm glad I can get this video done. I'm finally glad that I can talk. And be able to say everything that I want to say. And hopefully I can get some of these videos out in time. I'm not quite sure if this video is going to go out before my life update video. That one I have to do a voiceover on. Um, this this one I don't obviously so I can re uh, edit it quick. Um, but my obviously my family, my brother and all of that comes first. Life responsibilities. And then my videos. I still have to have an income coming in. My husband still has to have an income coming in. And uh, I still got to keep going. So that is it for today. If you guys have any comments, leave them down below. Still continue to pray. Um, if you guys need anyone um, or have anything on your heart that you want to tell us in the comments, um, I would love for everyone on my channel and anybody in the comments to pray for your family if you guys have any prayer requests please just put them down below and i have other people that would pray for your family also i have a lot of people that i can reach out to and do extra prayers for your family and the things that you're going through please don't feel that you can't um express all your feelings down below uh, i don't want my channel to be some kind of negative channel where you can't express your feelings so i want all of that down in the comments and we will pray for you uh, but that is it for today so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to give me a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i'll see you in the next one